What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. So we're going to talk about Scream 6 primarily in this video today. Before we get into that, I'm going to start off this video by talking about this big announcement we got not too long ago related to Jordan Peele and his upcoming fourth feature film that will now release on December 25th, 2024. I'm reading this from a variety report that goes as follows. It says Universal Pictures, which released the filmmaker's prior releases Get Out, Us, and Nope, added an untitled fourth film directed by Jordan Peele to its release calendar. It's set to open in theaters nationwide on December 25th, 2024. In true Peel fashion, there's zero information, not the title, the genre, nor the stars available about his fourth film. He's been similarly tight-lipped in the lead-up to his first three films, which range from pure horror to neo-western science fiction. The only theory I have personally about this project is in line with what many of you are probably thinking. It's coming out on Christmas, so Peel must be about to unleash a Christmas horror epic on us all that might commentate on Santa Claus in some capacity or something else rooted in some wild conspiracy that might exist about Christmas Day. Or could he actually be diving into the... Because, you know, Christmas is for for the religious purposes. It's the day that Jesus was born. Could we be diving into some horrific religious type of film? Now... Chances are the release date isn't that important. I've said this before about what I would like to see him do next. I would like to see him continue to flip these myths or legends, if you want to call them that, on their heads like he did with UFOs in Nope. Maybe his next project tackles the Loch Ness Monster, but with a twist, or Bigfoot, but also with a twist. You know, maybe it's a Get Out sequel, but time will tell what we will learn about this project. Time will tell us what we need to know about this project as we learn more as it progresses in towards its release date, which is now again going to be December 25th, 2024. I'm eager to see who he'll cast in the next film. Me personally, just a random person I'm rooting for to star in a Jordan Peele film. I'm eager to see Caleb McLaughlin be part of a project from Jordan Peele. I know Caleb McLaughlin is busy with Stranger Things right now, but I would love to see him participate in a Jordan Peele film if his schedule will allow him to. That's just one star in particular I would love to see in a Jordan Peele film. You guys can chime in down below and let me know if you're excited about Jordan Peele's upcoming next feature film or if you think he's overrated. Go ahead and let me know as well down in the comment section below and go ahead and discuss that amongst yourselves if you choose to. Jumping into Scream 6. Scream 6 almost didn't end at the shrine in the abandoned theater location that we actually got. Now, the shrine from this interview I'm taking was always going to be a part of the story, but during an interview with Entertainment Weekly, our writers had some fun comments. They went on to say originally it was actually just going to be in a warehouse, this referring to the, the ending. Uh, this is from James Vanderbilt, but it just felt like more of a museum referring to the shrine, I guess. We were having trouble finding a location that really worked. Then our brilliant scout location or a brilliant location scout and location managers found this place. They were like, we have a location, but don't freak out. It's a theater. We were uneasy because we didn't want people to think we were just copying and pasting from Scream 2. S adds Busick. But when we saw this space in person, we knew that it would have a completely different look and feel, especially due to the shrine museum element. And it gave us an opportunity to include the late Richie Kirsch's fan films, which included footage provided by Jack Quaid himself from his younger days. I mean, just to comment real quick, people still think that Scream 6 is copying and pasting from Scream 2, despite the obvious differences that are being overlooked in favor of highlighting differences. But it's as if the franchise just now started to borrow from its predecessors. It's as if Scream 6 is setting a precedent that none of the others have done and it's it's not the franchise has always borrowed from itself in one way or another many people think that screen four is very similar to screen three in the mode department i tend to think that what mrs loomis is doing while it has fresh tweaks to it it's in line with what billy was upset about in the original scream so borrowing from predecessors wasn't firstly introduced in scream six but i think scream six just seems to bother people a lot more uh but that's that's neither here nor there i guess um anyways there was also a motive change that was further teased in this interview. Now, the final cut that we got, we know, sees the father and siblings of 2022's killer Richie Kirsch, as this as this article points out, putting on the ghost face mask. But that actually wasn't part of the initial pitch, according to um, Guy Busick. We just knew it was going to be a family, a secret family, and they had a slightly different motive for coming after Sam. So. Would this have been a family of someone else coming after Sam because they blamed her for their loved one being killed? Maybe a Becker relative, let's say, who has always hated Billy and 
now wants to target Sam to take out some of that aggression that's been pent up towards Billy. Uh, maybe they were going down, down an angle like that. Or maybe Richie's family was always going to be part of it in some capacity. And it was just some other minor tweaks that they had in mind. But they didn't go into really any specifics of what the motive actually was. So we'll see if any real specifics of what was changed to the motive is ever revealed or any of the real what was changed to the reveal is actually ever revealed. I think this does make it clear, though, that Sidney Prescott was never the main target and that it was always Sam. For anyone that thinks that this was always somehow originally going to be about Sidney Prescott, I think they've done enough due diligence to make sure you know that it was not going to be about Sidney. It was going to be about Sam. I get that there is that mention of the motive shifting. However, the shift of the motive from Sydney's absence would not indicate to me that you had something written up that was tied in primarily to Sydney. If anything, um, I discussed this at one point in, in a few group chats that I'm in. I also put out a public tweet about it. If anything, maybe there would have been an angle where instead of Ethan and Quinn being Sydney super fans, as I suggested in another video, maybe all three of them blamed Sydney Prescott because of Richie's obsession. So Richie's obsession, which ultimately got him killed, they blame that on Sydney Prescott. I mean, after all, Richie did say he's a really big fan of hers. So maybe they blame her existence for his obsessive fandom, which ultimately led to him being killed. And that's what they were upset at Sydney Prescott about. I actually think that that would be something you could explore in Scream 7. You don't even have to uh, come up with something that digs up Maureen dirt again or come up with something that corrupts Sydney's happy life by, you know, turning her husband evil or something like that. Maybe there's somebody out there who lost a loved one who was somebody that had a sick fascination with the life of Sydney Prescott. This person's demise now has triggered someone close to them. They project that onto Sydney. So you have an easy way to once again have someone blaming Sydney for things that re she really had nothing to do with. <laughs> it's always the person that's not here anymore that, that really was the problem, but Sydney's suffering for it. And that's a simple way to do that again by having it be somebody related to an obsessed fan who was a fan of Sydney without ruining Sydney's safety and her peace that she's worked so hard to achieve. But you guys should let me know what you think about all of this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.